independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. In terms of when people are going to need these booster shots that have been so talked about. Yeah, look, I think you could feel safe through this summer. I think as we get into the fall, we're going to have to look at giving especially the vulnerable population boosters. I think there will be some continued discussion around that, particularly once we get past this July 4th deadline that the administration set. I think that you're going to see more active discussion around boosters in the fall, particularly for the elderly population. Yeah, like the booster? Getting a booster. Oh, yeah, getting a booster. You're fine. That's all you need to know. May have to take a booster later on. Some people may or may not. Here's when we'll take a booster. When we go to ourselves. Man, it's getting ugly again. All right, I should go get a shot. I don't know if you're aware of this. We are a reactionary society, not a society that thinks long term. Hence the reason why. We have a medical society that isn't about prevention. It's about reaction to what you've done to your body. Your body. We're going to be fine. We're doing okay. There's things out there that are nasty, supposedly. You know, this Delta variant they talk about, could it be awful? It could be awful. Here's the problem. You've cried wolf so many times that every single thing out there is the worst thing in the history of things. Why am I supposed to believe you at this time? I'm curious. I'm curious as to why I should believe you. Will there be a fall surge? Depends. I mean, if we've got how many people have been vaccinated, realistically, the young, mm, they're not going as fast as they could. They've moved the goalpost again. That's the new thing. So remember, it was like, we want 70% of the country vaccinated. Now it's like, well, hold on a second. That's not going to happen. So why don't we move the goalpost? We have already met the president's 70% goal. For all U.S. adults 30 and older. Yeah, but that's, you were shooting for 18 and older. And 18 and older, like, me, Because you feel what? You feel invincible. You feel invincible. I shall never. You want to know why you feel invincible? Because you don't see 75-year-olds trying to jump a motorcycle off a house through a flaming ring into a a crocodile pit. You see 18-year-olds do that. Why? Because they think, I, I'll, I'll be fine. That's why. Younger generation, they're fine. Where the country has more work to do is particularly with 18 to 26-year-olds. The reality is many younger Americans have felt like COVID-19 is not something that impacts them, and they've been less eager to get the shot. However, with the Delta variant now spreading across the country and infecting younger people worldwide, it's more important than ever that they get vaccinated. Yeah. Because it's the younger generation. And when I was younger, and when you were younger, what did we have in front of us that you don't have when you're older? You had a commodity called time. Time. You had all of it in front of you as far as you're concerned. So you really weren't too worried. Right. Man, I get the sniffles. A couple of my friends had it. They were fine. They were just annoyed because they couldn't go out and party. Uh, you know, it's an annoyance. I don't want to go over here. Even if I do, my mom's making me do it. I probably won't go back for the second shot. That's 18 to 26, in particular men. So this is what we got. You're over 30. You're probably getting the shot. Unless, of course, you think that in some way, shape, or form, you're getting something inside of you that is going to force you to become a houseplant. Why do I say that? Because there was a lawmaker out here in Arizona who believed that you were going to become like a zombie or a houseplant. Solid. Uh, or you've got some sort of microchip in you now, and they're gathering all the data for something. I don't know what it is. Here's the issue they're having, and I'm going to say it, throw it out there. People of color, the Latino community, they're not getting vaccinated. They're just not. You can take all of the vaccines in the world there, They do not trust, and in some societies inside of our country, it's a thing that they're just not going to do. There's a machismo thing that goes with it. I don't know how you fix that. You can go there and you can educate, you can talk about it, you can say, look at all these. They're not doing it, and it's understandable in some cases. It is. It's understandable. That's the frustration they're going to have. That's it. Here, I'm in Arizona. Only 22% of the Latino community is vaccinated. 
only 22%. And I can almost guarantee you that the majority of those are women. How do you go and get people vaccinated who have a distrust for this or in some cases they just feel like they're they're bigger and stronger than it it's gonna be tough man it's gonna be tough three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at chad benson show is your twitter tweet at us text the program love hearing from every single one of you i'm gonna go back to a story we did a couple weeks ago you guys might remember this story walgreens san francisco right dude rolls in on a bike rides his his, his his bike on in there, which I'm sure he totally got lawfully, inside of a Walgreens. He's like, I'm riding my bike in Walgreens with a giant bag, like a hefty bag, one of those big, like, 10-gallon, tough ones, 20-gallon. Starts just grabbing stuff off the shelf. People are filming and watching. Lo and behold, out he goes. Well, there's a heartwarming end to the story. But first, let's revisit a little bit of it. Shoplifters usually try to conceal their crimes. Wow. Not this one at a Walgreens in San Francisco. The thief grabbing items off the shelves and filling up a garbage bag, even as a security guard observes from feet away. Moments later, he bolts away from the store on a lift bike. The thief gets away with the large haul. The viral video laid bare the lawlessness, further eroding the image of one of America's most beloved cities. I live in this city, and I see this constantly. Yes. Because it's what happens now. It's what happens. The good news is Jean Lugo Romero was arrested. By the way, just to let you know, he came there and did that on May 29th, May 30th, June 1st, and June 2nd. Almost the exact same thing. He came there and did that in broad daylight. Just, here I am, I dare you to do something. I know that you're not going to do anything, security guard guy, and the reason is simple. The corporate edict is you're not allowed to do anything, and I know you guys aren't going to do anything, San Francisco, and the only reason they arrested him, let's be real, because the pressure was so great because people were aghast that this was happening that they thought, well, we better do something. Better find this guy, and if we do, we better arrest him. Normally, I'd tell you guys not to, but we better do it now. Indeed, it has happened so constantly that Walgreens says it has shuttered 17 of its stores in San Francisco over the past five years, mainly due to theft. I want you guys to listen to that again. Listen to what they're doing to their stores. Indeed, it has happened so constantly that Walgreens says it has shuttered 17 of its stores in San Francisco over the past five years, mainly due to theft. When you see the amount of theft in San Francisco for some of our average stores in the company, that multiplier factor is really driven by the, the organized retail crime. Theft here is four times the national average, driven by organized crime rings. Yes. So... They're closing stuff. Closing. Closing things down. What does that do? Does that make that neighborhood better? No. Does that make that neighborhood safer? No. What it does is the average person, the law-abiding person, the person who's stuck because, you know what? I'm living here. I can't afford to live somewhere else. I am going to have to. Now go out of my way to get my shopping done, to get my medicine filled, to get the things I need because people are doing whatever the hell they want. And at San Francisco, Portland, Chicago, New York, I'm looking at you. You've allowed this to go on in such a way. I don't even want to get into Seattle. Seattle, I don't even know what you're doing there. It is insane. But you've allowed this to go on. And what ends up happening? The people that you say you want to help. Oh, I want to help these people, right? They're disproportionately hurt by all of the evils that capitalism and, and, and the right and all this kind of stuff. I just, I want to help you guys. And what ends up happening? Your non-tough love turns into a place that people can barely stand to live. And now you've made everything more expensive because you got to add more security. you got to add this. you got to add that. That gets passed on the consumer. And the people that are doing this, you'll probably think that they're victims in some way, shape, or form. But the reality is they're just criminals. 
And when San Francisco and many of these other cities have a chance to do anything, they do zero. The city has yet to come up with an effective solution. This has been out of control, and people are scared to go into these stores. Seniors, people with disabilities, children, and it's just happening brazenly. And with few consequences. According to police data, less than 3% of theft cases this year have netted an arrest. Ultimately, we do need more police officers. I feel like the theft is outrageous. And it's obvious that people are taking advantage of the fact that there's zero consequences. Zero consequences. If you knew today you could walk in somewhere and steal something under basically a thousand bucks and there was zero consequences, zero consequences, and you were a thief. I'm not talking about the average person because the average person has a sense of, you know what, that's just wrong. I'm not going to do that. What would you do? Of course you're going to do it. And that's what they do. They steal up to a certain line because they know once you go over a certain line that you're going to be popped for for essentially like a grand theft situation. They're going to go and do that. Does that make the city safer? No. Does it make it better? No. Does it hurt the people that they propose to want to help? Uh, This is why I'm about. That's all it does. It is sad. And it is happening. You don't win with crime. And you know the other thing is you're doing a disservice to people who some of them have issues. They do. But they're not going to get their life together, and they're going to spiral out of control. And rather than say, we're going to crack down now, you do nothing. And now you have people that are essentially making their life crime as a full-time gig. And it's not a full-time gig. My God, I just, it is insane. Some of these DAs and some of these, some of these, these, city councils, the stuff that they throw out there, you don't win with crime and you don't make neighborhoods in particular, people of color, the neighborhoods that struggle. And they always talk, oh, we're going to help. You, you don't make those better by allowing crime to continue to ramp up. All you do is hold people that are good law abiding citizens hostage. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson shows your Twitter tweet at us. A lot of stuff to get today. Britney Spears. She said, they don't do what I say. I'm never going to perform again. I'm like, don't do anything they say. Don't do it. Don't Whatever she says, don't do it. We're going to talk about that. A lot more on crime and police officers. Why in God's name would you even want to be a cop? Why in God's name would you even want to do that? Plus, Ikea, what were you thinking? Damn Swedes. Oh, Chad, that's not very nice. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. Love it. Give it to my dog all the time. Dog Doodle takes rough greens. So do my puppies. So we sprinkle it on their food. It's canine vitus smart. It's got vegetables, vitamins, minerals. It's got all these probiotics. What it does is it brings your dog's food to life. Your dog's food's meant to live on a shelf. It's not meant to be, you know, in a uh, in a bag. You know, you know, you put it there. It's going to be there six weeks, six months. Who knows? Right. So this brings it to life. Brings out all the nutrients. But what it's done is it's transformed my dog in a way that is so amazing. So my dog Doodle, as you guys know, bad hips. Because of arthritis, he was just kind of, he was a ratchety looking dog. I'm not going to lie to you guys. He's not ratchety anymore. He's got a soft coat and he runs around. He chases ground squirrels and rabbits. He couldn't catch them if he was a puppy. But the fact that he's doing it now is amazing. Now's your chance to try it before you buy it. It's that simple. You go to roughgreens.com slash chad. R-U-F-F greens.com slash chad. You pay for the shipping. They send you a bag for free. Or you can call 833 833- my dog 77 833 my dog 77 request a bag they'll send it to you free you pay for shipping you will love it put it to the test rough greens makes any pet food better chad benson show ah oh. Tweet at us, text the program. Love hearing from you. Somebody went to our YouTube page last night and attacked me. It was hilarious. Called me soy boy and then started quoting Bible verses because I didn't have a disdain for Carl Nessup, who is the uh, Rada that uh, announced that he was gay and that uh, I too will be going to hell. And I'm like, my God, I can't believe that Jesus checks out my YouTube page. Apparently, it's not Jesus. It's just a guy who loves to walk around thumping the Bible in people's faces 
And uh, there you go. I mean, I, you know, I just, I laugh. Like, what? why are you so angry? Because I don't hate somebody? Because I allow people to make personal choices? It's beauty of, of God, right? Like, the, the whole thing is like, look, here's the deal. I'm going to die for you guys' sins, but at the end of the day, it's up to you guys what you do. I'm going to give you guys choice. You make the choices. Choose wisely or don't choose wisely. But there you go. And uh, he was, yeah, called me soy boy. All It was just, uh, first of all, soy is gross. Let's just get this out of the way. Secondly, if you are familiar at all with my show, you know I eat like a seven-year-old. So if you would have called me macaroni and cheese guy, I'd be like, okay, that's fair. Right? Guy likes hot dogs guy. I Again, fair. But it was just, I love people that love to condemn other people. As if you were given the opportunity. I'm like, did you read the Bible? Then he told me, you said there was like 613 commandments. That's not true. I'm like, again, you don't know what you think you know. You picked out five or six things in the Bible. I don't dislike anybody. And the fact that this guy came out, you want to attack me, and you then you went on Twitter and you were attacking other people, it just shows you how angry you are at something. And you don't get to play the judge, the jury, and the executioner. You think you do. But all you're doing is pissing people off. And instead of doing anything other where you like, you want to engage people in a conversation, you do what? You turn people off. You do. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from every single one. You can go to the text world. Somebody also texted me last night and said, because I answered him back. And he goes, I can't believe you answered me back. I'm like, why wouldn't I? I handle... The text, and I handle the Twitter and the Instagram. Anthony and I do Facebook. Anthony does a lot more of the Facebook than I do. You can check us out over there as well. Love hearing from all of you. Ikea! What were you thinking? I think it's a fair thing to say. What were you thinking? What were you thinking? That's it. That's, I mean, it's it. I mean, it's, I, don't, I don't even know what else to say at this point. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Biggest lie being told in American politics in recent weeks has been that the states are involved in a systematic effort to suppress the vote. Uh, Those arguments are being made by people who obviously haven't read any of these new state laws because that's not happening. As we all know, we had the biggest turnout last year since 1900. There is no effort in any state in America to suppress votes based upon suppression of minority participation. Okay, well, hold on a second. How is that even possible? Of course there is. Is there really? I mean, honestly, is there really? I asked people yesterday, as they stopped this this, this voting act from, from going through, right, this S-1 voting act, which was... Uh, this is the way I, 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 I look at things, right? So for the people act, for the people, it was a power grab. It was. The bill essentially would have made the federal government kind of in charge of everything. The bill requires states to establish independent redistricting commission to carry out Congress redistricting it would have required the president vice president and certain candidates for those offices to disclose 10 years of tax returns right but it would expanded voter registration automatic same day registration voting access by mail and early voting and it limits removing voters from the voter rolls So you're going to purge voter rolls. Go look at when they quote-unquote purge voter rolls, what most of that is. 
People have moved, right? They're mailing stuff out, and they don't live there anymore. They've moved to a different state. Return to sender comes back. Some people, they, they mail. I mean, we went through this the other day when they removed 100,000 people from, you know, Georgia's voter rolls. And it was like, oh, God, they purged people. 70,000 had moved. Just gone. Like 67,000. Just they're, They'd requested a move of address, change of address. They were gone. Different states. They moved up. 27,000 came back as return to sender. And 275 people just never responded to anything. They just, they got it, maybe, yes, no, never responded. It's plus deaths and the whole, it, it's crazy. But, like, that's what we do now. It's like, oh, my God, they're coming for you. It's the worst. The reality is the beauty of how we work in this democratic republic of which we live, Right? is each state handles its own business, and that includes elections. That's one of the reasons it's hard for a singular election to to be what? To be hijacked. We just happened, Chad. Settle down. Because you're dealing with 50 different states. Hell, inside of those states, sometimes there's five, six, seven different processes depending on the counties. All of those things make it so tough because it's just, it's impossible. They wanted to make it, hey, the feds are taking everything over. Look, what this is really about is an effort for the federal government to take over the way we conduct elections in this country. It is a solution in search of a problem. And so finally today, uh, we put an end to it uh, here in the Senate. Uh, The American people can be relieved. Well, if you're on the right, you're relieved. If you're on the left, you're not. If you're on the left, you vow, this is just the beginning. You heard from Vice President Kamala Harris moments after this vote. The bottom line is that the president and I are very clear. We support S-1 and the fight is not over. And Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said, make no mistake about it. This will not be the last time that this issue is going to be up for debate on the Senate floor again. The fight to protect voting rights is not over. By no means. In the fight for voting rights, this vote was the starting gun, not the finish line. I had a senior Democratic source who told me that we can expect Democrats to revisit this before the fall. You can revisit it all day. You're not going to get it. You don't have 60. And the filibuster's still there because, thank goodness for the likes of Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema, they're not giving up the filibuster, nor should they. It allows the party that's in power to not have a runaway freight train by making sure that the party's not in power can block certain things. And that goes both directions. Blowing up the filibuster, if they did, they could have passed this because it was 50-50 yesterday. Could have passed. You need the 60-vote threshold. Well, at 50-50, and some of the things that they can do, some of the nuclear options they're throwing out there and, and all these kind of, they could just go and do away with stuff. Oh, my God, what if they did that? Neither party should even entertain getting rid of the filibuster. Well, it's gridlock. It's okay. We set it up for that reason. The founding fathers had the foresight to say, look, we don't want to run away parties running everything to the point where, you know, we, we want to have some pushback. We shouldn't have federal elections when it comes to each state should be allowed to govern themselves. And that's what this did. I am for expanding opportunities for people to vote. I got no problem with that. I'm for making it easier, but at easier at the tail end. Meaning you go, you show your ID, you sign up to vote, you get all of those things done. And then you're able to vote. I'm for making it a, a a day off. There's a lot of things I'm for. But at the same time, some of the stuff, again, is an overreach by the federal government because they're looking to do what? To grab more power. And that's the way I look at some of the stuff. that the it, it, And it's funny because people on the left, they always want to defer to the government as like, that's their God. That's their Yahweh. Let's give them more opportunity as power. I want less of that and more of let the state handle things, let your city handle things, you handle 
your business. It truly isn't for the people. It is all about consolidating power in Washington, D.C. This is a power grab. 100%. I don't want D.C. controlling what's happening here any more than they already do. I think we can all, we should all agree on that. We don't, though, because we're too busy arguing with each other over stupid stuff. Welcome to the world we live in. 323 538 2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. All right, what were they trying to do? Well, first of all, in a day and age of being woke and you're a corporation, you have to embrace things. And in doing so, you're going to be clunky. You're going to sometimes look like what? A deer that was just born, a newborn fawn, but you're standing on your legs, but you also happen to be on ice. I don't know what Ikea was thinking. They're like, hey, you know what's great? What We make stuff that's extremely hard to put together, but it only costs you a nickel to buy. And it's, uh, it's a barnacle board. And uh, uh, you're going to love it. It's fantastic. We're going to give them funny names like schnookadookas. Right? You can buy an entire bedroom set that you're not allowed to sleep on because it'll break. And it's going to cost you $47. And it's going to take you six hours to put together. And by the time you're said and done, the person that's helping you, you guys will hate each other. They're like, that's a great idea. What else can we do to make people mad at us? Well, let's celebrate Juneteenth. It's all because of a racially insensitive menu put together to celebrate Juneteenth. The special menu featured foods like fried chicken and watermelon. They sent the menu to us in emails. IKEA employees say this menu sent to employees last Friday was going to be served to customers and employees as a way to quote, honor and preserve black Americans in light of the Juneteenth holiday. You cannot say serving watermelon on Juneteenth is a soul food menu when you don't even know the history of they used to feed slaves watermelon during the slavery time. So that's what Juneteenth was doing. They said to themselves, got an idea. Let's do this. This is going to be great. We're going to celebrate Juneteenth by having fried chicken and watermelon. Now, there's a history of those things. Okay? There was. But you also have to know, even if you think to yourself, I don't find a, you know, it's like, I had watermelon yesterday. I'm not black, I know. Producer Phil said he had fried chicken last night. I have friends who are black. They just happen to be my friends, right? Like, I don't, you know, you always go see that. But they they would say, this is stupid. Of course, who doesn't like it? feels more like a picnic. You should have said it's picnic day. Maybe that it got away with it. I don't know. But you have to say, what are the optics? Like, somebody, there's always got to be somebody in the room and go, eh, you know what? No. Why not? I'm just saying, look at it from our point of view. First of all, we're Swedish. Like, that's our company. We're called Ikea. We're we're, we're a Swedish company. And while trying to be woke, we're getting involved in something here that doing this is going to be something that people are going to look at. You're making fun of the stereotypical black family having watermelon and fried chicken. What's that look Think about, close your eyes and think, what is Twitter going to say about us? What is Twitter going to say about us? What is Twitter going to say? Oh, my goodness. Employees say the menu items selected, including fried chicken, watermelon, mac and cheese, collard greens, and more, was racially insensitive and ignorant. It caused a lot of people to be upset. People actually wanted to quit. People wasn't coming back to work. But employees say the decision behind the creation of the menu should have included voices of color first. None of the co-workers who sat down to create the menu, nobody was black. So let's just say you had black people, you know, people of color, come on in and say, all right, we're going to do this. What do you guys, do you think this is a good idea? And again, go and ask people like, hey, we're thinking about doing this. Do you think this is a good idea? Right, because that guy would have said, no, I don't think it's a good idea. (laughs) How about you give money to like uh, the United Negro College Fund? How about you give money to historically black colleges? How about that? Make, make that a better look than, than this one. Because, again, close your eyes, go back. What is Twitter going to say? Oh, my God. So they just delayed the Juneteenth menu by a day, thinking that everybody who was upset stayed home on Juneteenth 
and wouldn't notice on Sunday. This picture taken by the same employee showing what was served in the store the day after Juneteenth. Fried chicken, macaroni and cheese, greens. Customers also felt the menu was insulting. Like you shouldn't learn after you've insulted all of your black employees. You didn't know what to do. This is the city where you could have asked somebody and gotten an intelligent response. Yeah, no, I just... You take a step back and you say to yourself, that was a miss, right? Like WKRP, right? As God is my witness, I thought turkeys could fly. That was their moment. Got to be smarter about it. And I always, it's, it's, at this day and age, you have to ask yourself if you're some of these large corporations and you want to get involved with being woke and you want to do these kind of things and you want to be a part of this, and you want to say, I'm going to be woke because you think part of it's what you have to do. And in some cases, you know what? I've talked to CEOs, and they say, look, sometimes I feel like I'm we're paying money out and getting ahead of stuff because we know people are going to come for us later on down the road. You just take a step back, and you say, all right, what's Twitter going to say? How are people going to react? Even though we're trying to do the right thing and there's no malice involved in it, how's this going to bite us in the butt? And then, oh, oh, yeah. It's just easier to just, it's like mom and dad, right? They go out, grandma, grandma buys you a sweater that you're never going to wear. Grandma, next time, just give us some cash. It's just easier to do. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet, text, Raycon, best earbuds around. Love my Raycons. Go to buyraycon.com slash Chad. You're going to save 15%. Here's the other thing, though. When you go there and you do the buy now, use code SUMMER, you get 20% off. I'm telling you that. Shh, but it's super secret. All right? And I'm going to tell you guys, the best Raycons around. They've got two of them. that are. They've got all kinds of stuff. They've got headphones, accessories, all this stuff. But when you go there and you look at the E25s, which are amazing, which are incredible, and you look at the E55s, you're going to be blown away. So each six hours of battery life. E25's 24-hour battery life with charging case, meaning you charge the case up, away it goes. And that case right there, you can take it with you, and you can charge up your earbuds without having to plug the case back in. The E55's, 36 hours, wiring and wireless charging enabled, water resistance, easy to grab lanyard, all of these things. No wires, no stems, the best fit with the noise isolating uh, fit, but it's got special gel insert tip that makes it even better than ever before. And a price point, like I said, I will tell you this, starts well under 100 bucks. I mean well under 100 bucks. Free shipping, 45-day test drive, as they say, and 100% satisfaction guaranteed. No questions asked, right? If anything happens to your earbuds, they're going to replace it. No questions asked. What are you waiting for? Start summer right. Get out there rocking and rolling. Get yourself some new earbuds. Go to buyraycon.com slash Chad. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Chad Benson Show. Irreverent? Um, like, yeah. So what? It's the Chad Benson Show. Britney's conservatorship was initially orchestrated by her father, Jamie, to make life decisions for her, while also controlling what is now her estimated $60 million estate. Britney's court-appointed lawyer, Samuel D. Ingham III, says his client has called the conservatorship voluntary, but is seeking substantial changes, including her father's removal as co-conservator of her finances, alongside the financial institution Bessemer Trust. Ingham says, Britney's afraid of her father and will not perform again if her dad is in charge of her career. By the way, Britney's dad, I actually find this interesting. Because we saw in 20, 30, 40 years ago, you know, people had issues. You had, you, the meltdown, you'd see it in some of the, you know, the rags that they would call them. The Inquirer, you know, Us Weekly, you know, People Matter, like those kind of things. It barely. But really it was the Inquirer that, that profited off the, the tragedy and wackiness of stuff. But they also got, you know, scoops that others didn't because, well, they were willing to go places other weren't. 
Nowadays, people do it to themselves. And the Britney Spears thing is, it's, I find it interesting. Everybody's like, well, her dad's doing it for money. Her dad lives in an RV. He gets $16,000 a month, and he lives in an RV. That's it. I mean, you would think, well, if he's doing all this stuff, he would, he would take it, right? She's lost a ton of money. It's it's interesting because I, I was joking earlier, and it, it, you know, with 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 Anthony about the fact that I've seen some of her posts on on social media, and I'm like, mm, she's all there, but whatever, you know. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not a doctor, but I find the whole thing interesting. And is he really stealing it? But who are the people who are always trying to get and wrestle things away from him? And from the other person who's watching this, what is their end game? Maybe just maybe the whole thought process is we could steal money from her easier if Pops wasn't around. Just the thought. And I feel bad because there's a girl that's grown up in the spotlight and she is the, the, the tennis net of people wrestling over something that she doesn't have control of. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts independent life this is chad benson you set a goal if you reach it great if you don't you keep going to try and reach it and go beyond it so i don't really see any to be honest with you big deal here we were trying for 70 percent of adults by july 4th if you get to 67 or 68 you know there's not that much statistical difference between the two but you want to go beyond it that's Dr. Fauci there, and we do want to go beyond. You want to go beyond it. It's what you want to do. We are not at that 70% threshold. It really doesn't matter. I mean, uh, we're at a good enough rate, and enough people have been infected uh, that we're probably closer to probably 75% of people that are eligible to get it. We've gotten the vaccine. Maybe a little bit more. Remember, those are the people that are eligible. They wanted to have 70% of 18-plus fully vaccinated. They did not get that, but they are touting the fact that, well, if we move it around a little bit, we can find a win. We have already met the president's 70% goal for all U.S. adults 30 and older. And that's the, let's, at the end of the day, 50, 60, 70-year-olds, those are the people that are really the ones they were looking at. You want to stop the spread and all those kind of things, but those are the ones that were were absolutely the must because of how dangerous this was. People that were vulnerable because of uh, several different factors, usually comorbidities, those things mattered. The younger people, eh, they're younger. They think they're invincible. I'm invincible. Why? Because you're younger. When you're younger, you think, I can do things. I got plenty of time in front of me. Hold my beer. Where the country has more work to do is particularly with 18 to 26-year-olds. The reality is many younger Americans have felt like COVID-19 is not something that impacts them, and they've been less eager to get the shot. However, with the Delta variant now spreading across the country and infecting younger people worldwide, it's more important than ever that they get vaccinated. And how bad is this thing? How deadly is this thing? That's what they're looking at. Is this, is this thing going to be bad? Is there going to be something here? This variant? This variant? I, and it's tough because it's tough to buy into anything that people talk about when it comes to this as far as the federal government and all these talking heads because you've been wrong and or you've omitted and or in times you've lied about certain things. So it's hard to get behind anything you say when it comes to this coronavirus Delta variant. Like Delta Burke? No, 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 like Delta Burke. It came from India. 
Oh, why don't you call it the Indian variant? Because you can't do that. Because it's racist. See this? Well, why did they call it like the Arizona variant? Because it's not racist. Oh, okay. I guarantee you, if we had a variant that came from here, they would call it the American variant. Everybody would. Nobody would have any problem with it. But now we're calling it the Delta. We call it the Gamma, the Beta. It's the Beta variant. Be careful, kids. It is a far more contagious variant than anything we've seen. Uh, it appears to be a little bit more deadly. The data from Scotland says it causes more hospitalizations. Uh, we've got to stop it, and we've got to stop it by getting people vaccinated. Yeah, but what about the people that are vaccinated? That's another thing. What about the people that have been vaccinated? So you've been vaccinated. We still have no idea how long the vaccine lasts. We still have no idea if you've been infected how long your immunity last or there's a lot of things that we don't know and part of that is just basically because of time in terms of when people are going to need these booster shots that have been so talked about yeah look i think you could feel safe through the summer i think as we get into the fall we're going to have to look at giving especially the vulnerable population boosters i think there will be some continued discussion around that particularly once we get past this july 4th deadline that the administration said i think that you're going to see more active discussion around boosters in the fall particularly for the elderly population So there you go. May need some boosters, may not. I'm sure more kids will get vaccinated as we head towards school and schools try to figure out how to come back in a normal way and it'd just be easier to get your kids vaccinated. Some people, those things will will pop up as we head back. Right now, it's summertime. Kids aren't in school. The spread here is relatively low in most places. And there's also, you know, you've got two worlds. You've got the the red state, blue state. I mean, look at Mississippi where they have like 25, 30% of people that are vaccinated. Other states like Vermont, 80% of people are vaccinated that are eligible. And you also have a divide when it comes to people of color and, and, and white people, crackers. Crackers are going out and they're getting vaccinated. Why? Well, they have trust, vaccine, you know, outside of the, you know, the anti-vaxxer movement. They have trust. People of color don't have trust. They have distrust, and rightly so. Understandable. In saying that, when you have a population, well, so here's a perfect, I live here in Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona. Population of Latino community is growing tremendously. We've we've had a big population. It's growing. We've got 50% of eligible people that have been completely vaccinated here. But when you go to the Latino community, it's 22%. Most of those are women. How do you reach those communities? It's a tough thing, man. It's a tough ask right there. Reaching those communities are going to be a tough ask because they don't trust. They don't trust. Same thing with people of color. You can go in the community you want. You can bring people. You would think, well, are you going to trust certain people in the community? And at the end of the day, I don't know if they're going to. I don't. And that's a tough thing. Because people talk about, oh, the disproportionateness in the way that communities are being served. It's not about that. It's not. There's enough for everybody. But if you don't want it, I'm not going to make you take it. But you can't say you were underserved if it was available. It's like voting, right? It's another one of those things. Like, that's, that's where we are in this world. It's Everything's based on class or race. Yesterday, the S-1 Act, the amazing bill that was going to go out and protect everybody. This is, this is the thing that's going to protect everybody for voting, and, and it didn't pass. And Schumer's like, we shot it down because, guess what? Government, big government, federal government, D.C. wanted to own this thing, and we shot it down because we don't think that, Fed should have anything to do with voting. Schumer and Harris pissed. You heard from Vice President Kamala Harris moments after this vote. The bottom line is that the president and I are very clear. We support S-1 and the fight is not over. And Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said, make no mistake about it. This will not be the last time that this issue is going to be up for debate on the Senate floor again. The fight to protect voting rights is not over by no means. In the fight for voting rights... This vote was the starting gun, not the finish line. I had a senior Democratic source who told me that we can expect Democrats to revisit this before the fall. So, well, it's because they disproportionately want to 
hurt people of color? Because they can't vote? Well, no, they can't. Well, well, why? If it's important to you and you want to do it, you're going to go do it. Am I, am I right or am I wrong? I'm not saying there haven't been incidents. And I'm not saying there aren't some idiots out there. But the reality is, is if you want to go vote, you can go vote. Well, they want you to have an ID. Again, we'll go back to this over and over again. It's the dumbest thing in the world. You should have an ID. If you're over the age of 18, you as a human being should have an ID. Stop telling people of color you are a victim because you can't get an ID when you have an ID and you know that. Don't listen to that crap. But like everything else, they make it about, well, they're underserved. Could they do some more stuff in certain areas, whether it's with the vaccine or with voting? Yeah, you might be able to, but at the end of the day, it's available if you want to do it. If you don't want to do it, you've made that decision. You've made that decision. You can take vaccines into places where predominantly it's people of color, the Hispanic community, the black community, whatever. And if they don't want the shot, it's not because they're not being served. It's because they don't want the shot for whatever reason. They don't trust. They don't think it's a big deal, whatever it is. It's not about color sometimes. It's about choice. It's about trust. 323-538-2423 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Filibuster, still there. Kirsten Cinema, Joe Manchin aren't letting that go. And I think it's a good thing. It gives the power truly at times to stop being run over to the party that's not in power. Gotta get that 60 threshold. That's why this thing was killed. You didn't get to 60. It was a 50-50. If you take away the filibuster, you will have dominations by each side. And they really want to kill that thing. And I'm telling you, you want to talk about a death knell for, for, for the Democrats. I would think that even if you believe in some of the stuff, because we're a fickle nation, even if you think to yourself, man, they want, uh, yeah, we need to get more stuff through. And they got rid of that, and they're doing some stuff. But I just feel like now they're taking advantage of it. They're going to hand the power back to the Republicans so fast. Because what we don't like is seeing one party absolutely crushed and overrun. We don't. And we ha- we're fickle. We're like, oh, you got all the power right now, but we're going to give some of it back over here. And then, oh, my God, you got all the power now. We're going to give it back over here. That's what we do. We want that balance. And we need that balance. We do. Because otherwise, I'm telling you guys, it's going to look ugly. Because the people that eventually get that ultimate power, when left unchecked, are going to run hog wild with it. And it'll be scary. Because these people crave power, and the number one thing they crave is keeping that power on top of all of that. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. My Pillow. Well, people ask me, what do I love about My Pillow? First of all, the My Pillow is amazing. The My Pillow is twenty nine ninety eight. dollars It's 48 off right now. I love the fact that I machine wash it and dry it, which I did yesterday. I can, you know, it's never going to go flat. All of these amazing things. But something that doesn't get talked about enough is it's made in the USA. It's made right here in the United States of America. And it is incredible. It truly is absolutely amazing. We're having more things made here, and that is something we need. Get your MyPillow right now. $5 for more for a king size, $29.98 for a queen size, plus deep discounts on everything in the MyPillow shop. So you go there, MyPillow.com, use the promo code Benson. Check out the Giza Dream Sheets, which are amazing. Check out the towels, which are incredible. And that mattress topper, I'm telling you right now, best thing ever. 10-year warranty, 6-day money-back guarantee. You can call 800-983-4975 as well. Take advantage of all of these deep discounts. Check out the My Slippers. Get the original premium MyPillow, $29.98. 
Promo code Benson at MyPillow.com or call 800-983-4975. Chad Benson Show. If you're part of the politically exhausted majority, don't fear. Your time to be validated and rejuvenated is here. Wake up. It's the Chad Benson Show. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Now it's time to find out what's trending. trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? Let us take a peek and find out what's trending. If you would like to see. New York City voters await results from the mayoral primary election. Doesn't look like uh, Andrew Yang is going to be progressing through. But uh, we shall see. I like Andrew Yang. I do. He's just so... so my uncle's pretty conservative. He's, I talk about him on the show. He and I are business partners. First and foremost, we're, we're like best friends. And... and uh, he loves Andrew Lang. He, he goes, that guy speaks. He's got so many good ideas, even though he's on the left side of the aisle. He's not a fan of the giving money away, but I think that's also been a misconception on how he wants to do it. And I don't think it's a good idea because I know people screw that up. But still, he's got some good ideas, especially when it comes to education. Top of that, Scott Foster is trending. And the reason is people are asking a question. Why did the game last night? So the Suns beat the Clippers. There was... 90 seconds left in the game. It took 33 real minutes to finish. Five reviews in that span. And it was an exciting game, but that feels like a more of an NFL thing than an NBA thing. The Black Sea is trending, and the reason, ooh, the Russians fired warning shots at a British destroyer near the Crimean portion of the Black Sea. The Russian defense minister said, the ministry... Had the right to do so because uh, they thought that potentially there was going to be an intrusion. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? Head on over to the magical world of Google. NBA draft lottery. Million searches yesterday. Wander, or, uh, Wander Franco, I think his name is. He's, everybody's been waiting this kid to break into the major leagues. He had his major league debut last night, and he did not disappoint. It was a big home run. Some great plays. Britney Spears, end of conservatorship, potentially. She going to get free from all of whatever's going on with her dad and have everything to herself. A lot of people are asking the question, Karen the movie. It's a horror movie coming out about... A Karen who's racist and insane, by the way, just to point that out. And Max Scherzer, if you guys haven't seen baseball now, is checking pitchers uh, to see if they're putting substances on the ball. And it's gotten to the point where Max Scherzer was checked three times last night. And a pitcher for the Oakland A's got to the point where he was so frustrated, he gave him the glove, the hat, and then dropped trow to show them, there you go. So that's where we are in baseball. Makes it a little bit more interesting. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. We have officially jumped the Sharks here in America. When you hear this, I don't even know what to say at this point in time. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. 
4th of July, less than two weeks away, and we are expecting a pandemic record of travelers. AAA believes 3.5 million people will travel by air that weekend. That's nearly three times more than last year and almost as much as 2019. It's traveling time. Who's ready to travel, right? Who's ready for the excitement that is? Who's ready to get on an airplane? Hmm? Hmm? Now, if you're going to get on an airplane, first and foremost, I want you guys to be safe. Right, right? Like Just get on the airplane. Have have a good time. No, you're going somewhere. It's stressful. Everybody's doing it. The mask thing's going to drive people crazy. We get that. Don't get in the air and be an idiot. The number of unruly passengers is just growing. The FAA now looking at 3,100 cases, more than 2,300 related to masks. The FAA also proposing more than half a million dollars in total fines. Yeah. So... Get up there, realize that everybody hates wearing a mask. Hopefully, they'll have a ruling sooner rather than later. It's one thing the feds can't control is what goes on in the skies as far as a mask wearing. So be prepared for that because it, it's, 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 it's a pain. It is. It's the one reason I'm not traveling anywhere. Uh, that and the, I have nowhere to go. But uh, no, it's just I've had opportunities and I'm just, I'm not. If I was to go from here, Phoenix to, to say San Diego, see my son. It's an hour, right? It's like 45 minutes to an hour in the airport. All right, I guess I can. And then an hour there and then, you know, get off and get your stuff and go. So it's not bad. I don't have a want to fly from here to New York or here. That to me just seems like just that's a bridge too far for me. So I'm choosing not to do any of the things that I've had the opportunity to do uh, in the past. But not just in the air. At some point in time. You're going to witness something on the ground at the airport, and usually it'll be a lady who's pissed and upset, and Karen, this was about three weeks ago, this lady flips out at the airport, and she got taken down, man. They took it. She's a bigger girl. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just letting you guys, I'm letting you guys in on the visuals. She's wearing a yellow dress. It's not, it was just, that was not a look I would have gone with, but uh, they took her down. Uh, because she decided now's the time I'm going to charge somebody, and and by charge I mean like not with a like credit card, I mean like charge like ah I'm coming like a tank, a tank, and you can hear the person who's also working at the airport not have any sympathy for said Karen. I'm right, the manager of the airport here. That's not Who I saw you run through the door when you weren't supposed to. He and I saw him me push you out. You deserve a pretty fair mistake. It's what? Boo hoo. Boo hoo. Boo hoo. You f. Not helping. Excuse me? I want the manager of the back here. Yeah, that wasn't helping. You hear the guy say that's not helping. But she charged, tried to get through. They So know that you're going to be on candid camera if you decide to twist off and lose it. And if you stick around long enough at an airport, that may be something you get a view. Just letting you guys know this. As we travel more, be careful. The Karens are out there. They're ready to roll. And they're looking for the opportunity. An idiot passenger will be out there as well. So be prepared. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. We should have been more prepared at the border. We should have been. I'm going to go back to pre-President Biden when the other guy was in office. So Biden, President now, other guy, Donald Trump, still in office. The first debate was a disaster. I blame that on Trump. The second debate was a little bit better. One thing that didn't get picked up was Biden's like, eh, and I'm going to give a pathway to citizenship to 11 million people, which we know is not 11 million people. They've been saying that all along. It's like somebody's like, I put on 15 pounds. I was like, you're 380. When I last saw you, you were like a buck 70. How do you do pounds? <laughs> Just curious. Like, we know that it's higher than that. But it, 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 that was a situation where once he was voted in and then he was sworn in, people knew right then and there, opportunity is here. Told you guys I had a couple weeks ago, my friend's over and, 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 and Border Patrol, 
where I live is the headquarters for the Border Patrol here in Arizona and the Tucson sector, which is one of the busiest sectors in the country, if not the busiest. And it's tough to patrol here for a lot of reasons, one of which is a good portion of the land is Native American land. So, that's tough to patrol. They don't build walls. They really they, they won't even allow them to put roads in there. They've got to do everything by ATV. In saying that, last year they were telling me, pretty quiet comparatively. And I'm like, is it coronavirus? He's like, no, you'd want to be here if you had the worried about the coronavirus. Do you think you really mean Honduras or El Salvador or some South American country or some? No, no you, this would would be it. Plus, they were having huge financials. That that didn't play much into it. The way that I think some people thought. He goes, the big thing was is we sent you back immediately, and if you're applying for asylum, which many of them are always trying to do, they come here and they know what the process is that you have to wait on the other side. And that if you do try to cross and you get caught, that asylum thing could really be hurt if you think you really have a case. So people wait on the other side. Tried to. Not like that now. Now, my buddy's like, they surrender to you to the point where they're asking you, how long am I going to be in custody? When am I getting out? Nothing's being done at the border the way it should be. Because politics has gotten in the way of actually trying to fix problems. Now, we can't fix everybody else's problems, but we sure in the hell can enforce the laws we have and fix the problems we have. And if you don't think it's an issue and it's just a coincidence, think about this. We're heading towards record levels. We have seen a steady increase in illegal migration. As a Border Patrol agent, Jesse Moreno is on the front lines. Hey, Troy, Romeo 273. We tagged along with him recently for an exclusive look at how Border Patrol is handling a 20-year record high in migration across the southern border. Does the Border Patrol have the manpower to respond to that many people all at once? We do the best we can. Agent Moreno operates in the Rio Grande Valley, where Border Patrol has seen more activity this fiscal year than in the last 10 years. And that's only the recorded numbers. Yeah. Let's not forget the unrecorded numbers. Now, for several years, you had a ton of people coming here and overstaying their visas, flying in and overstaying their visas, which made up a decent number. Uh, But still nothing compared to what was going on south of the border. Overall, it's nuts. It's crazy. But you think about the people that you catch for every one of those, how many truly get through? How many truly get through? And during a pandemic, you would think, hey, we really need to make sure that this thing is, we do the best we can to stop what's going on. You know, we're we're telling our citizens, you can't do this and you can't do that. You can't go here and you can't go there. Yet at the same time, if you try to come over here and and you wander through and stuff, they're really not doing what they, they, we shouldn't be allowing that. That's just it. We shouldn't be. And we can have sympathy and we can have empathy and we need to change some of the laws, which like everything else, instead of fighting it politically the way that they do because it raises them money, we need to put people in power who want to actually feel empowered to go do something out fear of retribution from the Twitter mob and all this stuff. But we need to enforce some of these laws and rules. We can't be the gateway to everybody. Come on over here. It just can't happen. Border Patrol estimates that so far this year, around 20,000 migrants have crossed the border here undetected. The Border Patrol chief in this region says that's extremely concerning. This sector hasn't seen those type of numbers before. That pulls about 40 percent of my manpower away from the border security mission just to address this humanitarian mission. We've seen increases in fentanyl. Just this fiscal year, we've had 1,000 pounds of methamphetamine, 1,000 pounds of cocaine. Is this more of a national security problem or a humanitarian? problem for us to provide national security we need to know who and what is coming across our borders absolutely why wouldn't you want to know that of course drugs are a huge problem we get that we know that we should be trying to stop that a majority of people coming here are coming here because they're desperate they're terrified they're in positions that that nobody should be in but they are for failures for 
economic issues when it comes to their country, corruption across the board. Uh, There's so many things that go into it. But we still need to know who's coming here, 100%. Me being here in Phoenix, we talk all the time to the Yuma sector, talk all the time to, to, to communities across the board who are being impacted by this. In ways where they they can't handle it, like we we have no we we can't take any more people, we just can't do it. We can't afford to take any more people, but it's not just that they come across the border like all right we're here, it goes from there, and spreads out across the nation. A group of local police chiefs here told us the surge has had an effect locally as well. A lot of the federal resources have had to repurpose. They spend a lot of their time processing these families. So that tasks our daily resources. But the chief said that focusing only on the surge in migrants misses the point. Perception is that we have immigrants c- crossing over and they are invading our cities and our neighborhoods. And that's simply just not the case. What it does. It ties up the hands of my federal partners, our federal partners. Yeah. It does big time. But this is just a station like a layover because they're not going to be here for long and they're spreading out. And you should know who's coming here and why. You should know a lot more than we do. And we should start to enforce some of these laws in a real way. We need more judges to get through these cases faster. We need less baloney like Sanctuary State, Sanctuary City. We need everybody working together to try to stem the tide while all the while trying to figure out, okay, what can we do to help some of these nations without allowing them to continue to take advantage of us? But it's not going to stop until we start to do some of these things. But while we continue to put idiots in power who really like Kamala Harris, I'm not calling you an idiot, but on this subject, I'm calling you an idiot. Because you don't care, you think it's a joke, and you thought it was going to go away. That's the reality of it. It's not going anyway. Hasn't gone anywhere since 86 when they're like, all right, we're going to give everybody amnesty, but it's the last time we do it. Here we are, lo and behold, those many years later, we're still talking about the same thing, and we've not fixed it. And I know for politicians, what's to fix? It's not broken. We're making tons of money. Oh, you mean actually stop the problem? Why would we do that? It's a problem for you. It's not a problem for us. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Raycon, best ear buds around. I wear my Raycons everywhere. I'm going to go work out after this. What am I going to have on? My Raycons. Rocking out a little bit. Relaxing. Listening to my books on tape. Noise isolating fit is amazing. New soft gel tip, price point that's incredible. This summer, get yourself earbuds that truly are incredible. They got the E25s, the E55s. The cases themselves are charging cases, meaning you charge up the case, you put your earbuds in there. You don't have to worry about being connected to something with electricity because it's holding the charge and recharging earbuds. That's awesome. There's no stems, there's no wires, different colors to choose from, and it is awesome, awesome, awesome. So the E25s. E55, check them out. They start well under $100. Right now, buyraycon.com slash Chad. When you go there, type in summer, you're going to get 20% off. <gasps> yeah, that's the super code to do it. Don't waste your time buying something and overpaying for it when you get better earbuds at a price point that won't break the bank. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Chad Benson Show. If you like talk radio like Chad Benson likes his meals, you've come to the perfect place for takeout. Amazon says today over the two-day Prime Day event, members bought over 250 million items and included in that was $1.9 billion of things bought from small businesses that sell on Amazon. The most popular item during Prime Day was a Fire TV Stick 4K. Also popular globally was a Roomba robot vacuum, a Keurig coffee maker, and apple cider vinegar gummies. I don't know about the gummies because that just sounds gross. Right? Can we be real? Would, would you like a gummy that is also a cleaning product? Like what? Yeah, it's pretty odd. Like does that come with poison control? That's not, Chad. That's not very nice. 
The fire stick was, yeah, it's a no-brainer. I don't get the Roomba. I got a couple buddies and their wives, they, they got Roombas in their houses. And that damn thing, I've never seen it do anything. You know what it's like? It's like people get the pool cleaners and puts them in there. It's a robotic pool cleaner. But it's not the, it's not the Zamboni machines. If you watch the hockey, they got the Zamboni machine, goes up and back. It's just that one that just floats around. And it never seems to get anything. Like the dust just moves away. All it does, it's like it's like the, the people who blow leaves, right? All you're doing is blowing leaves to another area. You're not doing anything. Not sucking anything up. And the room is up. And then out of battery. But those were those were the big ones right there, people. So to recap, Roomba still important. I don't know why. It's a way of saying I'm trying to keep my house clean while all the while not really keeping the house clean. Just throwing it out there. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us again. Britney Spears trying to get free. She's going to be in court. Talking about her conservativeship, it's worth about $60 million, was worth a lot more at one time. Her dad is now the conservator of her estate. The notion that she can do all these things and do them well, I'd be so curious to know what it is that's been presented to the court that has led a court to say, yes, this very high standard of literally saying to someone, you can't make decisions for yourself, um, has been achieved. Yeah, that's our buddy Dan Abrams of Live PD fame. It is interesting, right? But I think you watched a meltdown in front of the world. That's what you watched when it came to Britney Spears at some point in time. And was she mentally incompetent? She shaved her head. She did a lot of these things. She's been a star since she was essentially born. And, you know, she's had her ups, her downs, and, and it's all happened in front of the public's eye. But there must be something to it. I think it's going to be more important than it typically would be, right? Because we're hearing that behind the scenes, she's been saying that she'd like to end this, meaning when she's being talking to investigators. And yet there's been no formal motion made by her to end the conservatorship. I think if she gets up there and says, I want this over and here's why I think that I've changed and I think that I can take care of myself, et cetera, I think that would have a big impact. I wonder... Who are the people pushing her to do this, and what is their stake in this? Let's just go back for a second. It's been going on for a while. At one time, her fortune was close to $300 million. She's worth $60 million now. But it does beg the question, what happened to a lot of that money? Where did it go? I think it's a fair question. These people get taken advantage of in a lot of different ways. And I do wonder who's pushing you if you feel somewhat comfortable that dad's doing everything. Just saying, even though you say you're not. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. In terms of when people are going to need these booster shots that have been so talked about. Yeah, look, I think you could feel safe through this summer. I think as we get into the fall, we're going to have to look at giving especially the vulnerable population boosters. I think there will be some continued discussion around that, particularly once we get past this July 4th deadline that the administration set. I think that you're going to see more active discussion around boosters in the fall, particularly for the elderly population. The booster. When will you need said booster? What about the variant, the Delta variant? It's deadly. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know when you you'll need that. I think we don't even know how long these things last in us, and why does it matter? Well, we're coming out, and we're living life normal. But imagine if things get a little, you know, spin off just a little bit. Do you think this genie's going back in the bottle again? You think Gavin Newsom's going to go, it's time for everybody to go back in or, or you know, Cuomo or, or any of the, you know, the people out there that want to, no, it's just not going to happen. It's not, you're not going to get people back in who are locked inside essentially, or had their entire way of life changed for the last 18 months. 
so it does matter because this is pretty manageable. It's kind of negligible. You don't really feel it. Some people are still getting sick. Okay, yeah, but people are... All kinds of things are happening to people on a daily basis. But this is minute compared to what it once was. So the vaccine has helped tremendously. Durr. Now the question is, how long does it last? I don't know. Nobody really knows. Like they said, well, it could last a year, but you might have to get one in the fall. But it might last a year. It might not. Uh, uh, this variant's nasty. Uh, but again, maybe if you've had it and you've got the vaccine, you may not have to get one. Maybe if you had it, we don't really know how long these things last. Some scientists suggest that it may last you know, a lifetime. Other scientists suggest that you're going to have to get uh, shots at least for a while. I mean, they just don't know. And now, of course, you've got the next boogeyman up, which is Delta. It is a far more contagious variant than anything we've seen. Uh, It appears to be a little bit more deadly. The data from Scotland says it causes more hospitalizations. Uh, We've got to stop it, and we've got to stop it by getting people vaccinated. Dr. Shia. So some people aren't going to get vaccinated. I think we know that. I think Mississippi has like 22% of the population vaccinated. Think about that. It's red state, blue state. In a lot of ways. Red state, blue state. I mean, Mississippi has essentially a quarter of their population is vaccinated. You think about that for a smidge. Just a quarter of their population is vaccinated. That is not a good look. Because they're going to end up probably paying heavily for a while. Eventually, the natural thing will take place, and there have enough people that will have had it, exposed to it, that it won't spread, but they may be in in a serious situation. It's up to them if they want to get vaccinated, because the whole thing is, let's get this thing to the point where it is negligible, does not affect our daily lives. I think we're there. It's nice to be back doing normal things. It's what we should be doing. But we've got to look at the whole picture for our country, as well as the world, but for our country first. Let's be real. We're on an airplane. What's the one thing they say? In the unlikely event that the cabin becomes depressurized, oxygen will fall from the roof, right? So, boom, the little breathing thing. What's the first thing you do? Does it say, oh, take care of everybody else and yourself? It says, no, take care of yourself first, then everybody else. That's kind of what we're doing. That's a good thing. Some things, though, are going to be tougher than others. People of color and younger people. They're not getting the vaccine. A myriad of reasons. People of color don't trust. You can take these vaccines to the places, right? So the Latino communities across the country, they're not getting vaccinated. Here in Arizona, it's like 21%, 22% in other parts of the country. It's near that same level, and most of those are women. Being vaccinated. African American community, they're not getting vaccinated the same rate as white community. Why? There's a lot of reasons. The younger community, we know why. They're lazy and they have a commodity that other people just don't have, which is time. They feel they're invincible. They have plenty of time. They're healthy. They're not worried about it. We have already met the president's 70% goal for all U.S. adults 30 and older. Okay, that's 30 and older, but... Where the country has more work to do is particularly with 18 to 26-year-olds. The reality is many younger Americans have felt like COVID-19 is not something that impacts them, and they've been less eager to get the shot. However, with the Delta variant now spreading across the country and infecting younger people worldwide, it's more important than ever that they get vaccinated. But will they? No. They'll do it when they want to do it because they've got time. And when you have time, you think you're invincible. You're not in a rush to do certain things. That's kind of the way that life is. You're 21. You think you're going to live forever. And you can do a lot of other things that somebody who's 50 doesn't have that luxury of doing. 
and I wouldn't expect them to. In fact, I almost look at them and go, that's weird. Why are you doing that? That's where we are with this. We're not going back indoors anytime soon. Take a deep breath from that. I think we'll see more people start to get vaccinated, especially younger generation, as we head back to school and people are trying to figure out what are schools going to do come the fall, right? Come August, September, what are they going to do? Are they going to mandate this, mandate that? We can start the big fight all over again. Is that going to happen? I don't know, but we'll find that out. But there are groups of people that just aren't going to get it. You've got people of color who are struggling, distrusting of government. No problem with that. Understandable. Don't say that you're disproportionately underserved because you're not. You're getting the opportunity. They can bring it to your community. But if you don't want to take it, that's that's every, that's not everybody's fault. That's that's a choice that you made. You've got the people that are hesitant just because they want to take a step back. They want to see how long this thing is. You know, a year into this thing, they may go, okay, I'm totally going to get that. It seems to be, everybody's fine. You've got the people, of course, who believe that you're going to turn into a plant or be controlled by the government. Those people are never getting it. We know who those are. There are some that just aren't, and we have to work our way around it, and we can't be beholden to them. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. SCOTUS has spoken yet again on a big case today, especially if you have kids. This is a big case. When Brandy Levy didn't make her Pennsylvania high school varsity cheerleading squad, she took her frustration to Snapchat colorfully. I said it was F school, F cheer, F softball, F everything. Her school accused her of breaking the code of conduct and suspended her from the junior varsity cheerleading team. But the U.S. Supreme Court said the school's disciplinary action violated the First Amendment. The decision said schools may have a special interest in regulating off-campus speech, but not enough to overcome Levy's interest in free expression. Yes. She won. That's a win for the First Amendment, which is good. Why do we have the Second Amendment in case the First Amendment doesn't get upheld and work? She was pissed and angry, and we've seen schools overreach, right? We've seen schools overreach in the past, and I think... This sets a precedent for a lot of things, right? You go and you apply for a gig. Know this, that a majority of hiring managers, not at like Arby's, I'm just saying that. I'm not going to say nothing wrong with Arby's, but they're not looking at your social media. But other companies that have hiring managers, not the guy that just happens to be there taking the application today, but a hiring manager, they're looking at all kinds of stuff. And what's the big fear? Big fear is you say something, do something. People were, were, were opening two accounts on a lot of social medias. They, this is who I portray in public to work. This is who I am, me living my life normal with my friends. People don't do that anymore. But you're going to get, you know, in theory, they're going to catch you. It shouldn't be that way. What you do in your own time, in a lot of ways, should just be your own, especially if you're saying something where you're angry. And I'm glad she won. It was stupid because think about like I have an 11 year old Jack. I'm sure he's going to say something stupid. That's what I remind him every day. We have this talk at least once a week when he's not here and almost every day when he is here because he's playing with his friends and they're playing, you know, right now he's big into to hockey. He's played Fortnite doing all those things and they'll 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 say things. I mean, nothing like horrific, but. Not to, by today's standards. Again, five years from now, it may be awful. But in doing so, you don't know what's going to happen to you. And you're going to say something stupid one day about a coach or something, and these are the things that come down, and it affects you. That's a win right there. For free speech. Look at SCOTUS just pumping stuff out. How about that? What's next, huh? 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Check out Facebook as well, YouTube, Chad Benson Show TV. All right, let's talk about it. My pillow. The My Pillow. The My Pillow. The My Pillow. One started all. Twenty nine ninety eight, forty dollar discount. That's for the premium queen. Five dollars more for the king. Ten year warranty. 60 day money back guarantee. It's never going to go flat. You can throw it straight into the washer and dryer. It's awesome. Thing I love about it, besides how I sleep, which is great, 
It's made in the USA. Made right here in the United States of America. And how many of us can say things are made here anymore? Not a lot. Even if a portion of it is made here, uh, it's assembled in bits and pieces. This is the beauty of my pillow. Take advantage of the great savings going on right now. Go to mypillow.com, use promo code Benson. They've got deep discounts on all the products. Giza Dream bed sheets, the new my slippers, the the towels, and the mattress topper. And get your premium my pillow day for only twenty nine ninety eight. Use promo code Benson at MyPillow.com, promo code Benson at MyPillow, or call 800-983-4975. Take advantage right now. The MyPillow, 2998, MyPillow.com, promo code Benson, Chad Benson Show. Let the Washington Beltway strangle you. This is where the exhausted majority comes to refuel, realign, and reevaluate. This is Chad Benson. What would you do if you went to the bank? Well, Julia Yankowski went to a Chase Bank ATM in Largo just like this one to get some cash. But before she wanted to check her account balance, that's when she noticed a few extra numbers. My gosh, I was horrified. I know most people would think they won the lottery, but I was horrified. According to this Chase Bank receipt, Julia Yankowski had $999,985,855.94 in her account. Shocked was an understatement. Yep. Almost a billion dollars in her account. One billion dollars. How? Why? Who? Didn't I say, oh my gosh, who would put a billion dollars in my account? Nobody. She originally went to the ATM just to grab 20 bucks. And when I put in for the $20, they, the machine came back and said, well, we can give you the $20, but that'll cause an overdraft and uh, you will be charged. And I said, oh, just forget it. I know I've read stories about people that took the money or took my money and then they had to repay it. Cause, and I wouldn't do that anyway because it's not my money. Yeah, there you go. She sounds completely honest. So what do you do? Well, I mean, you know, you got a billion bucks in your bank. You got to tell somebody who you're going to tell, right? You can't call Ghostbusters. Call the bank. It kind of scares me because of the cyber knife threats and, uh, you know, I don't know what to think. She told me she's reached out to the Largo Chase Bank several times since becoming a temporary billionaire. And I just think can't get through. I get tied up with their automated system and it's, I can't get a person. Youngkowski says the first thing she'll be doing tomorrow morning is going up to Chase Bank and hopefully clearing up the situation. We were talking about this earlier. Like, would you or wouldn't you? Like, what would you do? What would you take? I wouldn't take anything. But now, uh, you needed 20 bucks and you don't want an overdraft fee. You wouldn't be tempted to go, you know what, I'm going to take 100 bucks. I'd go to them and say, how much interest have, has this thing made today? Oh, it's made $1,200 in interest. Okay, cool. I'd like to take out $1,200. How funny would that be? It's not very nice, Chad. This interest is like, how did you get that? Like, who made that mistake? Who made, who, who was like, oh, God, this poor lady. But there would be people tempted to do it and take the money. And she has not. At what point, do do you sit there for 30 days and don't say a word to anybody? And then after 30 days, she's like, well, it's been in there 30 days. Somebody should have noticed by now. I'm going to transfer some of it to my new Swiss bank account and tell your kids I'm going on vacation. Uh, you know, maybe she's yam yam to, to the grandkids. Have yam yams taken off. I'm going to go enjoy myself a little bit and go to a place with a no extra extradition tree. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. I don't think she should do that, Chad. I'm kidding, of course. Something I'm not kidding about is we're going to play the sound of the day. I want you guys to understand this came from a couple weeks ago. People getting ready to travel in mass this next two, three weeks. People taking vacations. Obviously, 4th of July is a big deal. When you go to the airport, be prepared for people that are going to be angry like this lady who charged into a place she wasn't supposed to be. And, of course, you 
going to do something like that, usually something leads up to it, and you have to ask for a manager. I'm one of the manager of the f***ing airport here. That's not Who saw him choking? 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 Who saw him choke me to the ground? Who saw me? I saw you run through the door when you weren't supposed he to. He choked me to the ground. Out. You deserve a pretty fair mistake. And it's what? Boo-hoo. 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 You f***. Be prepared. You might see some of that. People are angry. People are frustrated. The mask, the whole nine yards. Traveling is already stressful for a lot of people. But, and if you work at a place like that, and somebody, and look, she doesn't deserve to yell at you and all those kind of things, and you did something you weren't supposed to do, and they took you down, and you were traveling at a speed that a larger woman would be traveling at in a yellow dress, just take a deep breath. And don't make it worse by going boo-hoo. But stop asking for a manager and stop thinking you're the only person that has an issue. Just letting you know. Boo-hoo is everybody has a boo-hoo at some point in time. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. The school's regulation of student speech must remain tethered to that educational mission. That if there is a bona fide, legitimate educational reason to limit school speech, that it's so disruptive or so threatening, uh, the school may, although he didn't really outline when, uh, step in and limit that speech. In this case, all the courts who have looked at it said this is pettiness and, and the school doesn't have that right. Yeah, that's right. Why? Because a cheerleader who did not make the varsity cheer team said essentially f school f cheerleading f softball i don't know what softball had to do with anything they suspended her suspended her from cheerleading uh, on the jv team and she said screw it it was on my snapchat you guys you guys are doing something you have no right to do she took it to the highest court in the land and lo and behold she won because common sense says she should have because she didn't do anything bad but she said the F word. Again, settle down. It's free speech. The beauty of our country. Free speech. Right there. Free speech. That's it. Interviewed a number of coaches who worried that codes of conduct that students agree to uh, as part of these teams, as was the case here, Brandy Levy agreed to a code of conduct not to speak ill uh, of the team, the school, or anyone else. They say she broke that agreement, which she made uh, with the school. Schools are worried whether they'll be able to enforce those policies going forward. Yeah, you know what? I, I think, again, it goes back to common sense. If you are pissed off in a fit of anger and you say something at home all right i could see where you know if you were at school you're like this is this is stupid you're at school doing some stuff and there's real issues there that have to do with the school itself and inside of people learning and being able to conduct their day-to-day then i think mm -mm, no no I, I i think that that that's a different story and i think that's what they're looking at in in breaking it down she was at home pissed off on her snapchat right on her snapchat it was actually a small win for the schools justice Breyer rolled back uh, a sweeping appeals court decision that said schools have zero power to regulate student speech anytime the students are off campus here he said there actually are some circumstances when they can regulate student speech particularly cyberbullying threats online cheating those are the circumstances that wasn't one of these it's a win a good win, again, a win for free speech. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Crime pays for criminals in a lot of ways, doesn't really pay for the people who suffer from it. Doesn't. 
And those people oftentimes are business owners, right? Small, medium, large. Those things get passed off to the customers. Businesses close down in certain areas because they can no longer afford it or it's just not worth opening up. Too many cities are being allowed to be run around in insane, crazy ways. We'll go back a couple weeks. Talked about Walgreens. Remember that? San Francisco, guy rides his bike in. This guy's like Huffy 10 speed, maybe a 12 speed. I don't know. He's got a giant, huge, like 20 gallon hefty bag, just rolls straight into one of the aisles and just starts throwing stuff in there. Shoplifters usually try to conceal their crimes. Wow. Not this one at a Walgreens in San Francisco. The thief grabbing items off the shelves and filling up a garbage bag, even as a security guard observes from feet away. Moments later, he bolts away from the store on a lift bike. The thief gets away with the large haul. The viral video laid bare the lawlessness, further eroding the image of one of America's most beloved cities. I live in the city, and I see this constantly. Yeah. That hurts the people inside of those communities. Reportedly, you're supposed to be helping these communities, right? As, as, as a person who's a lawmaker, you go there, especially communities of color, communities that struggle with poverty, and high crime rate, but all too often the people that are being hurt are the people that are the innocent ones and the people paying the price in a lot of times ways you don't see because stuff's more expensive there because they have to pay for extra security or for all the stuff that's stolen, you have to pay a little bit more for things, things that you don't see that hit your pocketbook or eventually you shut things down and you make them travel further, which costs more money but in the run and want to help, you come up with these bizarre rules. Mostly liberal cities. Let's be real. Just being honest. Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York, Chicago. Who runs those cities? Anyone? Anyone? People on the left. And the people that tend to have a say in these cities aren't even Democrats. They're uber-progressive wackadoos who are out there saying, all right, if you steal under $1,000, we're just going to let you be. The only reason the guy, I think his name was Lugo, Jean Lugo Romero was caught, is because this thing went viral, and I think people were like, hmm. He went there May 29th, May 30th, June 1st, June 2nd. Four days in a row did the same thing. Think about that. He's looking at you going, what are you going to do about it? Indeed, it has happened so constantly that Walgreens says it has shuttered 17 of its stores in San Francisco over the past five years, mainly due to theft. When you see the amount of theft in San Francisco versus some of our average stores in the company, that multiplier factor is really driven by the, the organized retail crime. Theft here is four times the national average, driven by organized crime rings. Yeah. Four times the national average. You know, back in the, like the, the 20s and 30s, and people travel by boat, they come places, and they go to places like, uh, you know, uh, depending on where, like New York City, or they would go to uh, Blackpool or Liverpool and, and, and some of these seaside dock towns. You had all these little kids who would be in part of pickpocket groups. You'd, we even talk about the first time I traveled to Europe, I think I was like 11 years old, 10 years old, I went to play soccer over there. And some of the stuff we got warned about was watching out for pickpockets. People that will bump into you and get you distracted and come do things. That's what these things have become. This isn't out of necessity, right? This wasn't a guy trying to feed his family. You don't know that, really? He needs $4,000 of stuff? What are they eating, gold? No. You've allowed this to continue because... For whatever reason, you want to make sure that everybody understands that this guy is probably a victim, too. A victim of what? Not wanting to get a job? Not wanting to do anything? Maybe he's got a drug habit. It's expensive drug habit. Maybe he does. Why should that be Walgreens' fault and everybody else that lives in that committee's fault? The city has yet to come up with an effective solution. This has been out of control, and people are scared to go into these stores. Seniors people with disabilities, children, and it's just happening brazenly. And with few consequences, 
According to police data, less than 3% of theft cases this year have netted an arrest. Ultimately, we do need more police officers. I feel like the theft is outrageous, and it's obvious that people are taking advantage of the fact that there's zero consequences. Wait, they take advantage of that? No. Yeah, they do. And why wouldn't they take advantage of it? Given the opportunity, they're going to do it. And when you do not crack down, they're like, we don't know what the solution is. Maybe arresting people. Well, that's not a solution. It's not very nice. Well, I'm just throwing it out there. Like, if you see somebody and they're stealing bread and they're stealing, you know, certain food items, you're like, that person's probably hungry and trying to do something. You can at least go, there's a necessity. If you're stealing $500 in Gillette shaving accessories, we are so hungry, we could eat a Gillette shaving blade. That's how hungry we are. I am so hungry right now. I could eat one of those nice, smooth Mach 5 razors. That's an issue that needs to be dealt with. But you've allowed it to go on. You've allowed it to happen. You've told the police to stand down. Police don't want to work anymore. Police don't want to be involved anymore. Police are sick and tired of what's going on because they've been, what, seen as the enemy more often than not. And that's happening more and more. Let's talk to my buddy Jamie. He's a police officer here in Phoenix yesterday. He's got a new gig. His new gig isn't to be in the field anymore. It's to try to retain officers. His new gig isn't to be out and about helping like he was. It's to be out and about dealing with police officers. We're going to go more in depth in this over the next couple of days. On a daily basis, who have said, I've had enough. I'm done. Portland's a perfect example. Their first response team, right? The team that goes out there and deals with all of the chaos and craziness. They've said, we're done. We don't want this anymore. We're looked at by the bad guy. Not just by the people in the community, which isn't true the way that the media would make it out. Are there some? Yes. Let's defund the police. Sounds good. Somebody said, how do we make this better? Right? How do we get people to see that the police aren't bad? Well, when you go to pick up a phone one day and you're like, I don't even know who to call. Then you go, well, okay, that wasn't good. Remember Atlanta? Atlanta's like, we're going to defund the police. 15% jump in funding. Why? They have no choice. But what ends up happening is who gets hurt the most? Well, the police hurt people of color the most. Who gets hurt the most? The police are in areas where there's crime. And because of that crime... Those communities are held hostage by criminals. And because of that, people won't invest. If they won't invest, you're not going to get tax dollars. You don't get tax dollars, you can't have better schools, you can't have nicer things. Oh, yeah. that's that's. We can talk about all kinds of things that need to change. But let's be real. Crime, and in a good thing, nobody's like, you know what we should have? More crime. Some people probably say that because crime equals a safe job for them, meaning, well, I can be either tough on crime or it could be light on crime and make everybody who's a criminal a victim. Either way, it's a win. Who loses? The communities. Who are stuck going, I can't go to the Walgreens across the street to get my prescription. I now have to take a bus or I have to drive my car an extra 30 minutes or an hour or whatever. Because think about these big cities. It's not like you're just walking across the street and then I'm getting in the car and there's no traffic. That costs time, gas, all of those things. But that's okay though, right? Because we're doing what's right. This is silly for us to prosecute people who steal stuff. There's a difference between understanding the reality of necessity and people who are idiots. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. It does. I promise you that. Give it to my dog on a daily basis. I love my dog, Doodle. Thought we were going to have to put him to sleep last year. 
We didn't, thankfully, because we started giving them rough greens and it changed everything. K9 Vitasmart has things in it that are just truly, truly, truly amazing. It's got omega-369, the way they formulate this thing, the digestive enzymes, the probiotics, all of this stuff has brought his joints back to a place where he functions like a dog should. He runs around, he's happy, he's like a puppy, and it is awesome. They want you to try it before you buy it. It's simple and easy. You go to roughgreens.com slash Benson. When you do, you get this amazing, incredible uh, rough greens. And they're saying, you guys try it for free. Just pay for shipping. Like, that's who? That's amazing. So you pay for the shipping. They send it to you. Try it now, or you can call them on the phone. I know it's weird. 833-MY-DOG-77. 833-MY-DOG-77. Take them up on the task of helping your pet live a better life. Check it out. 833-MY-DOG-77. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. It's a weird show that shows us we have jumped the shark. Oh, we'll discuss. Chad Benson Show. Podcasts are American as hot dogs, apple pie, football, and sushi. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, my goodness. No. Okay, maybe not sushi. Next time you have a craving for something sweet and tangy, download a Chad Benson Show podcast. Mm, boy. That is good. It's different because you get a little bit of saltiness. It's so good because it's sweet and salty at the same time. Get a taste on iTunes, iHeart, or Spotify and binge to your ears content. Oh, yeah. You're listening to The Chad Benson Show. All right, I want you guys to understand this. Somebody went into Netflix says, I got an idea. Well, that's your idea. Do you like The Masked Singer? Eh, that shows like, all right, I guess. Yeah, that's all right. We've already got one of those shows. No, 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 no. Just hear me out. Hear me out. You like The Dating Game? Oh, I guess. They've yeah, already got one of those now. No, 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 no. Just keep in mind all the things doing here. Do you... Do you understand the world of furries kind of well i guess i don't yeah i guess it's weird like well, I'm, well, i don't get what you're, you're going you're, you're you're going here with this you ever watch the bachelor oh yeah that's a pretty big show what if i was to do all of those together excuse me yeah what if i was to tell you that i am going to have a show where we put prosthetic heads on people so it's regular bodies but they're going to wear a prosthetic head and it's going to be done like world class, super, right, like the best ever prosthetics. You can get Hollywood-esque. And then we're going to sit them out on dates. That's insane. Let's do it because we're Netflix. I want to get married. I want to have babies. Before I'm like 26, do you have health insurance? Welcome to the strangest blind date ever. Hey, how you doing? Damn. How are you? What are you doing? <laughs> Could you fall in love with someone based on personality alone? What is your ideal woman? Personality for me is everything. Ass first, personality second. You're the best looking devil I've ever seen. This so. is really weird right now. <laughs> so people are dressed up. It's like The Bachelor. It's like The mass Singer with a little bit of furries. And the dating game. They're going out and doing stuff, and they're done up. So, like, one looks like a cat. It's like, it is, it, picture, the, remember how horrible Cats was, that movie? The live action? It's this meets Wizard of Oz. Would you count this as a weird experience for you? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so, I like your fin. <laughs> So what if I pick you and I'm not what you expect underneath? Oh my God! <laughs> I've kissed this girl and I don't know what she looks like. Well, she looks like the devil. Hmm. I'm literally just like in love with the moment. Pull. Oh! Whip it, whip it, whip it, whip it, whip it. Oh! Time has come. This is going to be really tough for me. I can't choose both of you. I've made my decision. My sexy beast is. Yeah. 
That's where we are today, kids. Soak that up. Sexy beast. I just... I'm serious. I think people go in and they just put 20 things on a board and throw darts at it and go, there's our show. Got you over the hump. We do it every single day. Follow along across all social medias. Chat Benson Show TV, YouTube, and everywhere else. We'll do it again tomorrow. As always, Night Night Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.